So if you want a home plan nine grid, the first thing you'll need is a file and authorization server. The file server is uh, there to store all your programs and files and the auth server is to make sure you have permission to access those files and programs. In my case, I'm going to combine the two. Uh, you can run them as separate systems. However, if the auth server dies, then no one has permission to access the file server. A dedicated auth server is mostly a thing for environments with lots of users or a need for, you know, especially hardened systems. Um, so for simplicity, I'm going to do a combined file and auth server. So I'll be using what I called the Chinese mystery NAS um, on one of my previous videos. So thanks to my viewers for pointing out that this is likely uh, created by a company called AU Star. It's AOO Star. I'll put a link down below. Um, this thing has eight gigs of RAM, a, I think it's technically a two core, two thread uh, AMD, like a laptop CPU, I think it's like a 300U, um, 512 gig NVMe drive, and I'll be adding two of these platter drives. So they just slide into the top. And then the lid goes on. And that's what I'll be using. So the theory behind all this, the point of the file server is to serve files, but in a plan nine grid, we don't think of it as a machine over there that we can access the machine over here to get some files. The file server is just the storage. Most of the air devices I will end up connecting to the grid will not have any storage devices of their own when they boot. They will connect to the file server, and from that point, any process they run will see the hard drives in the file server as the storage for reading programs or saving data. The benefits of this are that I can just buy a machine that specializes in sharing files. This has enough CPU to do that, has plenty of RAM, has an NVMe drive, two platter drives, and a bunch of uh, networking ports. So it comes with four of them. Um, it only costs a couple hundred dollars and it sits neatly on a shelf. From an administration standpoint, my files are all in one place. If I want to back them up to an offsite storage, it's just from here. If I want to update the software, I just have to do it on this machine. So I'll be using this as uh, my authentication server too. Um, I'll put a link down below for the official Plan 9 paper on how authentication works. Um, but in short, the auth server will make sure that the users accessing the files have permission to do so. And it means I don't need to have separate user names and passwords on each device. Everything checks into the grid at one location. And this sort of thing isn't exactly new. And it's fairly common nowadays in most workplaces. Um, but in this, it's just built in right from the start. I've already done videos walking through the install process and setting up a file and auth server. So here I'll just go into the details of how and why it works the way it does. When setting up the file server, part of that is to configure the process which accesses the hard drive to start a network listener. This will listen for TCP packets on port 564. During boot, it will also run the CPURC script, which will set up a listener on port 17020, which runs an encrypted tunnel back to port 564. The CPURC script also checks to see if the system is running as an auth server, in which case it will run another script to set up a listener on port 567. I'll put links in the description to papers and man pages explaining the details of how the whole authentication system is handled. So I've now installed Ninefront and did all the steps outlined in the FQA to set this up as a file and auth server. The only unusual step I did was to spread the cache worm FS over two disks. The cache is running off the NVMe drive and the worm is running off one of the platter drives. One of the quirks of the CPU server is that they do not boot into a fully graphical environment. So this is supposed to be running with no monitor anyway. If you do want to access the graphical interface, uh, you just need to add back in the draw and the mouse devices. So it might be a little hard to see here because my Capture unit defaulted back down to uh, 1080p. But you'll need to bind in. So I'll bind after 
the hash i device, which is the draw device, back into dev. Oops, wrong words. Uh, B I N D bind after hash I dev and the mouse device, which is uh, the hash M dev. Now I can just run Rio and here we go. So, you know, you can do whatever you want on the file server, but it isn't best practice for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them is that if the system crashes, uh, then your grid loses access to, you know, all its storage. Um, and you can get into sneaky things too, like memory leaks that just sort of slowly build up over time. So next I'll be doing some fine tuning. Um, I'll be configuring additional ethernet ports on this and, uh, adding other devices to the grid. And until then... Uh, have fun.